because they're very special. Um, so that's always the furthest zone, zone five. And you go there to learn or to find silence. Okay, so you can see there's a scaling between there and there. So yesterday we were working at a driveway. What happens when there's a driveway that comes through the whole thing? Let's just pretend it's a bit access. schematic. Sorry? You can put things for daily access. On yeah, so you've got an access that goes to your house always. I mean, this is a bit long here, but every house has got a bit of a driveway or a little path from the road to there. Or if it's not a path, it steps up a, a, an apartment. So if you're coming home from work or going shopping, it's somewhere where it's part of your zone one. Anything along that road you tend to look at or notice, hmm. it's more frequently visited than maybe a place here or here. You got that? So it's really good to put things along there, which perhaps might need daily attention. Mailbox. Mailbox is one, a practical one, of course. <laughs> it is. It's on the edge of where the road comes and you. That's another edge because the postman can go there. So definitely a, a mailbox. But things like, um, like this is a, a huge thing, but if it's small, you might want to put things that, um, if it's a walking path, this is what we're assuming for cars, but if it's walking, like I have when I walk to the shower, I've got patchouli, so I can pick some, uh, uh, some patchouli and I rub it on my skin already, and then I'm under the shower. Or I have on the other side, when I walk out of the, the toilet area, I have my water, and then um, so I've got clean hands, and then I can pick things, herbs, that bring me to the side of the kitchen. So on that one run, I've, I've been able to oil my skin, have a shower, clean myself and go back to the kitchen with the plants for the kitchen. And it's all on my access. It's just a quick loop that I've made like that. Yeah? So that's just designing your needs according to the little energy cycles that, that, you're, that you've got in your life. And every one of you are going to have a different one. Some of you might have children at preschool or something or go to a yoga class every morning and drive out. Well, then maybe put, you know your gardenia or your lavender there so that you can take some with you and smell it as you're driving. Whatever you need, aromatherapy, whatever you need. Make sure you're designing it into your access routes. So that's part of, um, access is really important. That's why when you're looking at the property today, I want you to look at the property in a different way about access. How's the access working here? Yesterday we had a huge event. So that comes into design. Okay, they're going to have big events. They've got it all set up now, this part. Let's look at the access. The, um, when I designed it down there, the first thing for me was, let's make it so cars can get here, but not like drive straight. Like it, for most people, they don't know here, they, you don't know where to drive. Okay, and that keeps, tends to keep cars out. We'll make them go really slow at least. Hmm. Yeah, it slows them down. But the main thing is now to design so they don't even go, that building where, who's staying down in the, um, the building down there? So you're staying there. Maybe you can focus on this. That building was supposed to be, when we designed it last year, huh? Offices. A tool shed. Yeah. Oh, wow. Building tool shed. That's why that big yeah. thing's at the front, oh. to drive a tractor in or something. <laughs> Originally. <laughs> Steve brings me up and says, oh, I've turned it into colonics. And went, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <it's> just like, <laughs> you know, so <clears throat> retrofitting now the design around the change is a challenge. But we love challenges because that's what we're here for. Right? The more the challenge, the more creative we have to be and the more we have to work together to make it happen. So when you go down there, if, especially if you're sleeping there, try and think, how's this going to work now? Like that whole earth berm has to shift or, or, or maybe you think it doesn't, but... Have a look how it feels for you. You've got, um, with, with this zoning thing in mind and with access in mind. <coughs> ah, just while we're on that picture, the other thing that you'll see written in permaculture <coughs> is um, sectors. Okay? And that's, that's sort of like what we talked about <coughs> just before, the wild energies. So, let's say this is um, east. So I would say there's a sector on this property, and it's like a pie. A sector on this property, like all that side, which gets lots of noise. That's the wild energy coming on this side. Don't really have much control over it. That's what's happening, yeah? Let's say that whole sector, in the morning there's noise. This is very schematic, but that's where it's coming. It's coming from the east. So this area gets noise coming to this main area. So what I want to do, like I talked about yesterday, 
is maybe put, you know, I'd be putting, I would have put boomerang earth berms across here. Something like that. Directing the water into different plantings. So these would be like berms, mounds, planted out with trees and windbreaks to block that noise, for example. And by sh I sh I'd shape them like that, depends on the climate, but I'd shape them like that to bring the water back onto the property. Because you want, the more the merrier, everyone wants water. Maybe if it's, you know, a gully, you'd want to direct it out and spread it out, but here I'd try and bring it back onto the property. So that's a sector of noise, which I call pollution, really. Then there's the, um, the immediate sector of sun here. <clears throat> you might want to say, okay, there's the solar sector here, the winter solar sector. So the sun comes up here. So that sector, so I know in this area here, I'm not going to plant 70 foot bamboo, am I? You know? What happens if I plant 70 foot bamboo all across here? On that ridge? Yes, sir. Okay? So if you do a sector now, so if you walk on a property and you go, okay, and, and this area here, I've got this beautiful mount, you know, this is not here, but let's say it is, this beautiful sunset over a lake and a mountain. Same thing, especially in a temperate climate. I want to have that <clears throat> sun reflecting off the lake back onto me. So I say, oh, I need to open, keep this open. In Australia, my western side, I've got fire sector, total fire. That's my most dangerous sector because I've got national park, amazing forest there. <clears throat> so I have to make sure I don't put my fire, I don't put my fire pit on that side. I haven't got, you know, what am I going to design on that side? What the sort of things? Huh? Fire break. Fire break. What's a fire break? Succulents. Succulents? Moisture, nothing dry stuff. Okay, so plants that don't really burn. Yeah, we call them fire retardant species. Definitely. What else can we do? Water. Water feature. A water feature, if that land holds water, but if it doesn't, maybe you have to put a, a swimming pool or whatever we can do. A sun deck or a sit or meditate or a VL where you can sit. Watch the fire come in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get cooked. Fire power. <laughs> yeah, but exactly. We're trying to design elements in which are not going to um, promote but retard the whole thing from happening. I've got a whole, I've got my uh, fire tray. I mean, we have to have fire trays in Australia. They're usually about, well, I do it two, two tractor whips wide, just slash, but that's the minimum I do, but I usually do it about as wide as this greenhouse. A whole edge between the forest and, and where I am. So I just have that for fire brigade access because we've had a couple of big fires. And um, it's only going to get more extreme. Wherever you live, design for disaster. Hmm. Disaster design is really important. How to get out, how to have more than one water supply, how to really check out anything that can possibly happen. Right? Even with your structures. Try and make them like they're going to really survive a big storm. Because it's like, just like you can see with people, someone was telling me about the car park story last night, and then in here was the bliss story. There's the